How's it going everyone? Um, I want to tell you guys a bit about me before I had money. You see, I wasn't the person that I am today even just four years ago. Four years ago, before I started learning about investing, my mindset when it came to money and personal finance was the opposite as it is today. Back then, money didn't mean anything to me. Uh, if I had money, that's great, that's great. I can, I can buy more takeaways, I can buy more alcohol, I can, I've got more things I can buy. That's what money meant to me. My mentality back then was the mentality of a poor person, I'm not gonna lie. And if I had not discovered this one thing, my wealth would be nothing compared to what it is today. The thing I'm talking about is investing. So I was 18 or 19 years old when I first learned about investing. Before that age, my dad had always told me about investing and saving money. But you know, just like every teenager, I was too worried about other things, stupid things like fitting in at school and trying to be cool or something like that, just dumb things. So it was 18 or 19 years old where I came across this podcast called The Investors Podcast and they would talk about, as per the name, investing in stocks and they would explain that most people actually don't understand investing because what a stock is is it's a business and a business's goal is to make money and if you are the stockholder of the business over time you will make money investing is not just buying ticker symbols or trading in and out of stocks hoping it's going to go up no it's about it's about being a long-term owner of a business so naturally uh, as an 18 or 19 year old this interests you what i can buy a stock at my age for 50 or 100 dollars and become an owner in a big business i was excited but this is where i made my greatest investing mistake and every person who is new to investing or thinking about getting an investing please learn from from my mistake i'm the silly one who had to make it Okay, so a lot of podcasts that I was listening to and the videos that I was watching back then were talking about a market crash. They thought stocks were overvalued and there was big potential for them to go down. So this got me very tentative about making my first investments. And I didn't make my first investments for a couple of years, purely out of fear of a market crash. Long story short, I missed out on almost 40% of potential returns that the market got uh, over the years that I was too worried to invest. And this is why one of my pieces of advice to beginner investors and new investors is just dip your toes in first. Get used to the waters of investing, so to speak. Uh, it may be cold, it may, be, it may have its ups and downs, but you got to be playing the game if you want to make money. That's a fact. So a quick bit of advice, or let's not call it advice, let's call it a helpful tip for wannabe investors. Just go sign up with the brokerage firm ASAP. Robinhood, you can trade stocks for free. There's no fees to open an account or maintain an account. You can become a shareholder right away. Uh, or you can sign up with Webull or M1 Finance. Just one of those cheap brokerage firms so that you can get your feet in the water, your toes in the investing game as soon as possible. That's one tip. But one of the things you need to learn as a beginner investor is how to build up a portfolio. If you just go and buy Tesla stock, that's high potential reward, okay, but it's also very high risk. What you really want is high reward with as low risk as possible. So let's just assume you have a thousand dollars. You didn't give in to your impulses of buying the next iMac, but you saved up. Well done. Uh, but by the way, a thousand dollars is more than enough to build a strong portfolio. So the question is, where do we start? I'd begin with getting a few stocks that are secure, stable, and have a strong history to them. Stocks like PepsiCo, which pays a relatively nice dividend, it's been around for donkey's years, and its business model is tight. 
beverages and food, that business will continue to run in any market condition. So they're currently selling for $145 a share. You know, I'd also add a stock like AbV, a stock that Warren Buffett's company Berkshire has just bought. They pay a really nice dividend of 5% and that dividend has grown for 48 consecutive years in a row. Um, that one sells for around $105 a share. So there you go, $250 and you've built a good backbone to your portfolio and a bit of passive income which is always nice, right? Hmm, I don't know, what do you think? By the way, I just want to say that these are not stock suggestions, but they're merely examples to get you thinking. Another stock I'd consider adding is Berkshire Hathaway, uh, Warren Buffett's investing firm. Warren Buffett is the greatest investor of all time, and if you buy Berkshire, you own the investments that Buffett has made. So right away, this diversifies you into a range of world-class investments. Uh, it's currently selling for $230 at the time of making this video, around that. So now the stable, secure, diversified part to your portfolio is looking good. I'd also look into adding a stock from another country. That way you're not just purely in the USA. Uh, a stock like Alibaba, which I own myself, I bought it a while back. Uh, they're engaged in e-commerce in China, they're engaged in social media, online payments. They're just a very strong company in China, a nice one to spread your portfolio into different countries. And this stock is priced around $280 a share right now. Another part that I like to add to my portfolio is the enterprising companies, those businesses that are going to change the way the world operates in 10 to 15 years time, just like Amazon and Apple and Facebook have already done. You know, 10 years ago, the world was a different place. So I'm talking stocks like Snowflake, which is changing the way companies hold data. Uh, you don't need stacks of paper stored in a room, just use Snowflake. You know, or companies like Square, which is helping online businesses. Uh, essentially, the new form of business, it's online. Or even something like Planet 13, which seems to be coming, becoming more and more popular by the second. Just go ask financial education Jeremy. Okay, you know, look into all of these stocks yourself and see which ones you think will have a big impact on the world in 10 to 15 years time. Do your own research, do your own thinking. You know, it's just like Shaq, the basketball player, who's actually a very smart guy. He said, I heard Jeff Bezos say one time that he makes his investments based on if it's going to change people's lives. And once I started doing that strategy, I think I quadrupled my net worth. It's very important to have those types of companies in your portfolio. So that's just a brief example of some strategies and ideas of how to start building up a portfolio with even a small amount of money. But you might rightfully ask the question, Cooper, I work hard for my money. Why should I go and then use it to buy some stock? I could go on Amazon and buy some sunglasses or some new Apple AirPods. These make me feel good right away. Okay, that's a good argument. But the thing you need to know about investing is yes, okay, over the short term, you don't make massive sums of money like most people would like to make you believe. But over the long term, your money can grow at astounding rates. I want to share this image with you just to give you a basic example of how investing works. So look at this graph. Uh, we'll just focus on investor one. She starts at the age of 25, sets aside $5,000 per year for 10 years, uh, and has no investments after the age of 34. That's a total investment of 50K. Assuming an 8% interest rate, which is lower than the market rate, by age 65, that 50k has turned into over 780k. That is the reason why we should all start investing young, or at least as young as possible. Because of the power of compound interest, it can make us rich. Uh, imagine if she invested more than 50k, she'd be a millionaire. 
Uh, Albert Einstein, when he learns about the power of compound interest, he called it the eighth wonder of the world. That shows you how powerful it is. Um, to be honest, when I finally got over my stupid fear of a market crash and I started investing, it changed my life. Before then, I just thought of money as something to spend. I was just so dumb with my money back then. But when I started investing, it was a total mindset shift. When money came in, I was excited not to spend it and instead invest it to buy something like Coca-Cola stock or Alibaba. And I'm just grateful that I started relatively early on or else I'd probably be poor even today. So uh, I never I never know how the heck to end these stupid videos, but um, make sure to start investing as young as possible. Uh, try if you can to stop buying dumb things on Amazon like I used to, and instead put it into the stock market. Buy businesses. Over the long term, this will make you good money. See you guys later.